So I just woke up and I like to start my day off with some breathing exercises to get my body and mind awake. So I'm just finished the breathing exercises and I'm going straight into push-ups. A goal of mine is to be able to do 100 push-ups in one set because I can just roll out of bed, wake up with the breathing and get some kind of workout in, in a couple of minutes. And so the push-ups are finished and my body's warm and I broke a sweat and I'm gonna go straight into some stretching. I like to do yoga or stretching for 10, 15 minutes to maybe 20 every day just to keep my mobility up because I haven't been doing as much sport or uh, judo lately. So browse YouTube, see what works for you. There's beginner, advanced, intermediate, all that sort of stuff. So yeah, just find what works for you and do it every day and boom, shakalaka, boom. Shower time. Now, I like to live lavish and add a few drops of lavender oil into the shower as it's steaming up just for a little something something. Then I shave, cleanse my face and brush my teeth. You know, standard dental skincare routine. Now, I don't have coffee every day, but when I do, I like it strong and it means business. I'm combining that with a simple breakfast of rolled oats soaked in some soy milk in the microwave for a minute and a half and it comes out perfect. I throw in some maca powder for the extra aroma and flavor, some milled linseed for that fat and protein hit, and then I can throw in some nuts, some raisins, banana, the world is your oyster my friends, but this right here is the breakfast of champions, let's go. Hope everyone is staying hydrated with their reusable bottles of water and all that. But throw some berries in, bro. Antioxidants and flavors. What's good guys? So I just finished another video for Artisty and if you haven't checked that out yet, you probably should, especially if you're in Ireland or Dublin right now. Um, apart from that, it's been a long week and I think I'm just gonna go surfing for the weekend, uh, going up to Bundoran and I was thinking of filming everything that goes on, kind of what I'm bringing, where I'm going, where I'm staying, so you guys have an idea of what to do if you wanna go surfing. Also, I think this could be a new start to a travel series for this channel, so yeah, hopefully that kicks off and let's go. I packed fairly light, just a couple t-shirts, a flannel, a comfortable jumper, jeans, tracksuit bottoms, underwear, socks, a hat and some shorts to wear under the wetsuit. In terms of footwear, bring hiking boots, comfortable sneakers and a pair of sliders. And don't forget your rain jacket. Everything that we do, everything that we buy, everything that we um, eat, eat, yes, <laughs> everything's going to be recorded. Very importantly. Most I already important. know, um, I got a recommendation for one really cool cafe. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll remember the name at some point, but it's in Bundoran and apparently it's got great coffee. Okay. I actually bought a kettle, uh, like a camping kettle. Really? Yeah. So we have to make tea at some point. Petroleum. Petroleum. So as we got into Bundoran, we decided to head straight to the supermarket to pick up some breakfast essentials, snacks, sandwich ingredients, wine, fruit, that sort of stuff. Then we headed to the campsite, set up our tent and headed straight out to make the most of the rest of the day. 
Then we found a lake called Loch Melvin that was really beautiful and we decided to spend our sunset there. We ran into some locals that were fishing and they recommended trout and pike fishing. If that's something you're into, this is a really good spot for it. After the sunset, we headed back to our campsite and got an early night to get some rest before surfing the next morning. We spent our first couple nights camping at the Lakeside Centre in Bundoran because they offered toilets, showers and electricity and we wanted our first couple nights to run as smoothly as possible. Breakfast was made on an electric gas stove which cost like 10 euros and it worked perfectly. The centre was also less than 15 minutes away from Tullin Strand Beach which was the closest surfing location where you can rent wetsuits and surfboards for 20 euro from the morning till 5pm that day. Now surfing relies a lot on mother nature in terms of tide and wind direction so this is where apps like Magic Seaweed come in handy because they will tell you the optimal time for surfing in your specific location. For us the waves were kind of low that day so we took it easy and took a walk on the beach and just kind of chilled in the water and nothing too exciting. Did you catch many waves? I caught about four waves. Pretty cool. Regardless of the waves, it was really invigorating and soothing to be in salt water. It really has some kind of healing qualities to it. And we spent the rest of the day just chilling in the sun, sipping gin and tea, snacking away and enjoying the nature. We caught another beautiful sunset and the next morning our friends were going to pull up because I explained how good of a vibe it all was. I'm, just, I'm not even anxious, I just want to dive in like... You were, straight to it, like. you were saying you were worried about the cold? Nah, I'm not worried about the cold. He's worried about the cold. Yeah. <laughs> I'm good, man. I'll just run in. I'll just... So you're using it for coffee? Oh, and I'm about to make noodles, so I don't want a hint of coffee in my noodles. Oh, fair. <laughs> what you cooking up? Breakfast. Eggs, bacon, mushrooms, tomatoes, rocket, mozzarella. Me? <laughs> Gotta be done. Michelin star breakfast, camping. So, what are we doing? We are heading to Rosnala. Oh, such good coffee. So we just stopped mm. off in this um, really cute little cafe. What's it called? The Baker's. The Baker Shack. Something. Thank me later. Doubt if it's called healthy, but <laughs> anyway, anyway so they have the most amazing selection of like cooked stuff. We have to review everything we got. Okay, so the oat milk coffee, oat milk, oat milk flat white, is very good. It was three euros, as opposed to three eighty in Dublin. We were aiming for 220, but I guess Bundoran is suffering from inflation as well. Rocky Road. Rocky Road, this is Max's request. It looks like a good balance of marshmallow and wafer. Mmm. Huh? Gotta get this piece of marshmallow. Just tops, you can see. Okay, so that's basically five out of five. Yeah. It looks good. It's though. like a caramel slice. Isn't that apple? Oh my god. <laughs> Good. Oh wow, it's orgasmic. <laughs> oh my gosh, this. Mm. Oh my god. Where can I describe this? Oh damn. Wait till you see this. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. After surfing at Rosnalo Beach, we had a quick bite to eat and set up camp at Wild this time at Mullamore Beach. So yeah, that's basically how my camping slash surfing experience in Donegal went. Now camping and surfing were both new activities to me at the start of this year, so I was stepping out of my comfort zone a little bit, but I'm glad I did it. It was very relaxing and soothing, yet 
an active holiday. If you aren't totally comfortable with camping in the wild where there's no toilets, showers or electricity, I would advise to start off at a camping center such as Lakeside Center where they have all of those facilities and more at a cost of like 10 euro per person per night. In relation to surf gear, I rented all of mine from Bundoran Surf Company. Everybody was really helpful and nice and the cost was 20 euro for the day that's until 5 p.m and that's included your wetsuit and surfboard i found that two to three hours per day surfing is plenty you kind of get tired paddling after that and just check magic seaweed for the best tide times and try hit the waves for those times for food we mostly just cooked our own food so we just stocked up on supplies in a supermarket and i had a portable gas hob which i bought for eight euros and then four refillable gas canisters for another eight euros so 16 euros in total and I brought a pan from home, cutlery set from home, and paper cups and plates always come in handy also. However, if you're trying to go out somewhere nicer to eat, I did check out the Peak Restaurant and the Blue Leaf Restaurant. Both had amazing food. I really liked the seafood pasta in the Blue Leaf and the Peak had a beautiful view over the ocean. So you're dining like on the cliff beside the ocean. Pretty crazy. Anyways, if you're feeling something a bit more casual like pizza, burgers, Mama Rosa's is the spot. You cannot go wrong with Mama Rosa's. And my personal favorite cafe was Foam. It was run by surfers. It was such a chill vibe. Great coffee, great comfort food. They have a seating area outside and everybody's just really cool. All the places I've mentioned are in Bundoran town, which is only 10 minutes drive from the Lakeside Camping Center. I will leave a full packing list and all my recommendations in the document in the description below. But just briefly, I want to touch on a few things. In terms of camping equipment, there's a few things I'd like to share. I stayed in a few different tents and they all did the same job, some better than others, but I must say that my favorite tent is the Airbeam series from Van Gogh. It's super quick to set up, there's no poles or anything, there's literally like air beams in the tent which you just plug your pump into and pump it up and it comes up by itself. It's really resistible to the wind and rain and very spacious for all your food or all your friends, whatever. It's just a really great tent and if you have the money to spend, I would go for that. If you don't feel comfortable investing that much in the tent, I totally get you and Little has two man camping tents for like 25 euros which do the job just fine. I would also highly recommend that you bring an inflatable mattress with an electric pump that is going to save you big time. You can get pumps that plug into the cigarette lighter into your car and that makes life so much easier or else you can buy a camper van to domestic plug adapter which helps you charge all of your electronics and inflate your mattress. Also, don't forget your sleeping bag. This is very important. I forgot mine one time and ended up having to buy blankets and it was just not convenient and we froze our ass off. However, if you're wild camping, make sure you stock up on power banks and make sure they are charged so you can charge your phones and whatever else you need. Also, make sure you have some kind of light source, so a torch or a lantern, or if all else fails, you can use the torch on your phone, but just make sure you have a power bank to keep that going. I did bring a barbecue with me one time, but I found that the gas cooker was way more effective and it just gets the job done a lot quicker. The last thing I would recommend that isn't essential, but it really helped out was a cooler box. It helped keep all our food and beverages cold and also served as a little tabletop for preparing food. That's pretty much everything. So if you learned something new, please drop a like. This trip is very fun and can be very inexpensive if you have access to a car and some adventurous friends. Go ahead and share this video with them so you can start planning your trip. If you've got any questions at all or want to share your experience, drop it down below and I'll be sure to get back to you. That's all for now. See you in the next one. Peace.